Hi, everyone. So I'm Alex Scofi. I am working on the campaign for uh, Gina Gersberg, um, Artie Walzer, and Denise Belcher. Um, for all of you who don't know, we have a really important uh, town council election coming up in Teaneck. It's a little lesser well known because it's not at the same time as a lot of other bigger elections, but it's just as important. Um, and of I'm sure all of you are curious how it's gonna work out because of the coronavirus. All the ballots will be mail-in. Um, so that means they'll be right to your house. You can send it back. You don't need a stamp. Um, and we're hoping you'll vote for lines one, two, and three. Um, that will be Gina Gersberg, who I have with me today, um, Artie Walzer and Denise Belcher. So um, first off, hi Gina, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful, as well as can be expected. Yeah, it's definitely interesting times. I know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to, I'm staying home and keeping away from others. Right. And, you know, we want to make this as, I don't even know if we can say as easy as possible, but we are staying home to ease the pressure on our healthcare workers and our first responders right. because they need more people to just stay home and stay healthy. It's true. Right. This is what's on everybody, uh, everybody's yeah. mind. And it's been so difficult to just move on with this campaign. Like, cause we know this is not where people are, what people are thinking about. And yeah. the crazy thing is these local elections are the most important elections to participate in. And historically and traditionally they have the lowest voter turnout, but mm -hmm. When you go and you vote for someone that's sitting on your town council, those are the people that are making decisions in your everyday life. They yeah. make decisions about what it's going to cost you to live in the town, what your town looks like, what kind of businesses are going to come to town, what kind of development do we want to see in town. So the vote is so important. And if people are not really happy about what's going on, then they need to vote for a change. Mm. which is People for Progress. Lines <laughs> one, two, and three, Belcher, Walser, Gersberg. Uh, good plug, good plug. <laughs> Equity, inclusion, affordability, and quality of life. So why don't we maybe start with, um, with equity? Do you want to tell us sure. what that means? So uh, equity is really setting the town up so that in the future, um, we don't have the kind of debt that we're currently experiencing. Mm. Um, we need to be a little smarter about how we're developing the town so that we create more ways to gain revenue. Uh, if you look at the budget, I mean, it's just kind of simple to understand. There's a lot of things that we have to pay for, and then we have to have ways of getting money in. It's like anybody's household, right? Mm -hmm. So if you constantly overspend and you have to borrow money against the things that you're spending money on, then you build up debt. Right. which we have done currently as a town. So we need to really examine that and find ways um, to start to pay that down so that we're not handing that on to future generations. Um, and so inclusion, what, is, what does that mean for you guys? Running well, uh, I have to say being part of the uh, Teaneck Democratic Municipal Committee has been a wonderful experience because we have members from all 23 districts in Teaneck, and there are people of every background, all walks of life, all different types of careers, and we come together and we discuss what's happening around town and how it impacts all of us in different ways and what all of our different points of views are about these issues. And there's all type, we have conservative people, there's progressive people and everything in between. And I think that we need to, we have a lot of different committees in this town that can work together and find ways to include the community in a lot of the decision making in the town. Um, I actually recently read this book that it's um, a triumph in white suburbia. Can you see oh, that? Okay. I think I actually have looked, I, I don't oh. know, if I think I've read it, but I've seen it. And I right. So really it's amazing. And as far back as the 50s, they talk about creating this human resource board to get all the groups of town together. And what, and what we really need to see on these boards also is representation from all parts of town. Um, a lot of these boards are kind of stocked with handpicked people from the council. 
Um, okay. And we don't really need boards that are just saying yes to everything the council wants. We need all different ideas and opposing opinions because that's how you come out with something that's going to be um, really beneficial to a majority of the people. Yeah, I think I've, and I think I remember hearing Denise mention at one point that she was on one of the boards and when she questioned it, she said they were like, why are you questioning it? And she was like, right. shouldn't that be our jobs? That's anyway. our job. That, exactly. Yeah. And, and even, you know, on the council, um, you know, even though Denise Hardy and myself are running together, we're not one mind. I mean, we have different opinions about things and we're, we know a lot of different people in town. So we're getting our ideas from different groups of people, different neighborhoods, different, you know, all kinds of different backgrounds. Right. Well, the next one would be uh, affordability. So what, what does that mean on your platform? Okay, so a lot of the housing that's being built right now, which is being deemed as some parts of it are affordable housing, um, but because we take HUD money to build these projects, it's very difficult to get TNEC residents in there because so they're fact, open. What is HUD for people who may not know? Oh, I'm sorry. That's yes, the uh, that's a housing and urban development. It's that okay. it's the Department of Housing and Urban Development. It is a government funded organization and what they, and this is all statewide, they are asking every single town to build affordable housing mm -hmm. so that we have a certain percentage of everything that's built set aside for people with certain income levels. Um, but when you take, when you build housing um, using funds from the government, then you have to open up these apartments to all seven to seven counties within our region. Okay. So it's hard to get Tina people in, but there are other ways that we can develop. It doesn't all have to be um, HUD housing and it doesn't all have to be rentals right now. Every single thing that we're putting up in town are rental properties. Uh, there are reasons for that because we are not really seeking developers that um, want to do different types of housing and there's it's kind of multi-layered for developers that want to do housing that's just um, rentals then they get a certain type of a loan where it's kind of like the same type of a loan that you or I would get it's just a mortgage on the property and then um, as they they just pay that down, it doesn't matter what's rented or not rented, it's just they're paying a mortgage. Okay. But if we put up condos, a developer that gets a mortgage for a condo, it's a little bit of a different platform, so it's more of a risk to that developer. So they have to start paying that mortgage off as soon as they start selling these condos, and they have a certain amount of time to do that. Okay. It's, like a, it's time stamped so that it's a little bit more restrictive and it's a bigger risk. So specifically, now, yeah. oh, sorry. Did you uh, but there, is, there are in-betweens with that. You can also put up projects as rentals and then turn a certain amount of those, those housing units to condos. And depending, you have to have a certain ratio of rentals to things to purchase in order for the people that are purchasing to be able to get a mortgage. It's complicated. I don't okay. even know if you want to even talk about right. this, but I, just to simplify it, right now, the only properties that we're putting up in town are rentals. Okay. So we're not really developing properties for people to own, which means that we're going to have people that are, are buying into the town and are investing in this town. Um, and they're also paying taxes to this town. Okay. It's a different tax rate for a someone that owns a, an apartment building than someone like you or I who own a property and we have to pay those taxes mm -hmm. no matter what or a property gets taken away. So um, maybe we just get real yeah. quick. So what, what are you looking for to do um, that would help make things affordable? Like what would be, you said there's a lot of, there's a lot of different things that are happening. But right. So, you right. Might look more towards? Well, all right, taxes are all over Bergen County are, are very, very high. Mm -hmm. So we, and I know that for years and years, towns have been looking at sharing services and all these different things that we can do um, in on that realm. But as far as affordability goes, we need to build housing that people can own that is affordable. 
mm-hmm. not just rentals because people want to own things. There's a lot of right. people that can't afford to live anymore in Queens. Brooklyn is, has been unaffordable for a long time. And now the Bronx is becoming unaffordable. And this, where we live, is a wonderful place for people that still have to commute to the city and want to have access. Um, but we have to have properties that they can own. People are not looking to come out to New Jersey just to rent expensive apartments. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just quality of life in general. What does that mean when you guys talk about that on your platform? Uh, we have to maintain the open space that we have in town. Um, we have to be careful about not developing that and um, also maintaining it. Uh, I know that in Boti Park, for instance, they just put up that field house. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of other areas in the park that need a little bit of maintenance. The Rota Center, for instance, which they're currently working on, mm-hmm. but that was not maintained for many, many years. And now it's actually costing more because they have to play catch up on a lot of that mm-hmm. maintenance. And then the walking bridge that goes across Windsor Road and the railroad tracks to Boti Park is in terrible disrepair. They had to close it down years ago and they had mm. for like years, they couldn't even use it. And then they patched it up, um, but it's, it has not held. And there's, I mean, I did a video recently where I was in all these different places yeah. in town. And I, after I published it, I actually had a couple of people that didn't live in town comment and say wow your town looks really run down and i thought oh i you know it kind of does and you don't notice it because we're here all the time and we're yeah. passing by these things it's like something in your house that you don't pick up for three weeks and you forget that it's there yeah. but then when someone comes over you're like oh let me get these shoes out of the way when, when i know? saw the one image in that video and it's just a picture of you've got the the that brand new uh Whatever, whatever that right. the field is. house, right? And then, literally in the same shot, like you don't have to turn the camera or anything. You've got the crumbling concrete on what you were talking about that walkway, right. and it didn't occur to me. I've been there, been you know here for how many years, and I'm looking. I'm oh my gosh, <laughs> like right. why? I mean, I'm, it's good we're building new stuff, but what about the crumbling? Right, literally. Right. Right. And there's feet, wonderful right? things to maintain in this town. There yeah. are a lot of buildings that are already built that can either be reused or repurposed even with housing i mean there's a lot of areas that we have that are commercial that can be also mixed use so and and, you know in today's lifestyle people want walkability they want to be able to leave their condo and come down and get a cup of coffee or maybe you know buy a few groceries like this is the type of things that people are looking for in the 21st century and, and I mean, I know this is mixed use when you, I saw there were, there were ideas and plans to have like on the bottom floors of buildings, like the, the shop right. and then up yes. top actual housing. Is that what that kind of? Exactly. That would okay. be mixed use where you have commercial and residential. But mm-hmm. again, the residential, we need to start building things that people can actually purchase. Right. Yeah. There's not that, I mean, rentals are, are, are needed. I'm not saying that they're not, but right. not in the amount that we're putting them up and as fast as we're putting them up these yeah. buildings are not all rented and, and even the balance between you know having the some balance between the balance exactly. that's what is current right. and these apartments are very expensive the one bedrooms over on the palisade avenue apartments are two thousand dollars so you know for someone that's renting a one bedroom which is most likely either a single or maybe a couple Mm-hmm. You're talking about that they need an income of at least six thousand a month to qualify for an apartment like that. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Exactly. That's, I yeah. Know. And no, I just talked to someone else, one of my friends, who said he he it wasn't him, but one of the friends he knew who grew up in Teaneck couldn't afford. They were looking Hackensack or something. Right. Right. So I'm not sure why that's being called affordable housing. Yeah. The slogan you guys use: "A People for Progress, A New Vision for Teaneck." So maybe we've kind of talked about it, but maybe you want to like just re- restate what specifically that means for TNEC. Yeah, and ironically, the new vision for TNEC is looking at a master plan, which we have, by the way, and it's actually a good one. It probably just needs to be tweaked because master plans should be looked at every couple of years just to make sure you're staying on track and up to current standards and what you know current needs are. In fact, 
the census that's going on right now, one of the things that we look at in census mm -hmm. is for developers to look at the demographics of areas and decide what is needed there. Oh. Not what, you know, if this isn't for developers to come to Teaneck and decide what do the developers want to do, it's for the town and the developers to decide what is needed in this area. Mm, okay. So, and I really think, um, and the master plan is, we should probably, I should probably get it up on either the website or whatever for people to really look at um, what was proposed there. But when it's not being followed at all, there's mm. nothing that's going on today that is staying within the guidelines of, of a master plan. And there's no sense in even having a master plan if you're not going to follow it. Right. For people who have been to those town council meetings, I mean, it sounds like even you guys. Uh, are kind people of were like freaking out about it, meeting after meeting after meeting. But mm -hmm. when you go to a town council meeting um, and you know, they have the good and welfare, you say your three minutes and that's it. Like it's never addressed. If the council does not want to answer a question, the council does not answer a question. Is there any way to change the, the actual format? I mean, you, you mentioned these three minute limits. Is there any way to change so that people might be able to- Well, listen, the reason why you want to have a three minute limit is because you don't want people, you know, I mean, there has to be- I, you're right. I know, I've, I've heard those- but um, I think that the tone of the council and how they reply to the requests mm -hmm. of the town uh, can definitely change. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, it, it's definitely, I personally, I rarely get up to even talk at the council meetings. I feel like it's kind of a waste. And mm -hmm. the people that take, do get up and, and talk, a lot of times they're just completely like either shot down or um, I, it's, it's really very derogatory. I don't know if you listened to the council meeting that was on the phone. I didn't know I didn't get a chance. <laughs> okay. Well, they had this council meeting where it was a phone in. And it was also on TV. Is this the most so, recent one? The most recent one. So I was watching it on TV and then people would call in. But listen, I'm sure they had some technical difficulties too. Right. Not a lot of people phoned in. But it was very interesting because um, the, when the people phoned in, they phoned in their three minutes. And then later on, the council was like ripping the, this, these people apart. But now there's no one there to even defend themselves because it's all done by phone. So um, it's even giving the council even more of the ability to completely dismiss whatever is being said in the town. Oh, I heard from you, your platform is that idea of changing the tone. If, if that's the first step is just, you know. It should be welcoming. I mean, when you go to the council, those are your neighbors. You know, you don't have some kind of crazy position over everybody. Mm. You know, I mean, I'm not running for office because I, I have some ego and I, you know, want everybody to like me. I feel like I have something to give to this town and to add to the council. Um, and I, I really feel like as a council member, you are on the exact same level as every other person in this town and that you should behave in that way and treat everybody that way. Mm. So Cedar Lane being a good, a good uh, business hub in Teaneck, um, but some may say it's overdue for revitalization plans. Um, do you have any ideas on what we might want to do with Cedar Lane? Uh, um, kind of well, area? yeah, I mean, listen, we have to kind of look at businesses a little bit of a different way. Um, even major retailers are not doing very well right now because people's shopping habits have changed. Mm -hmm. So um, with that whole uh, the American dream thing in the Meadowlands, oh, yeah. the whole premise behind that particular mall and the idea of it is that people want an experience. They will come out for an experience. Okay. So we kind of have to think along those lines of what would they come to Cedar Lane to do? Or, you know, what kind of an experience would they want to have while they're also shopping? Because right now we have an awful lot of restaurants, mm -hmm. a lot of drugstores, um, but not a lot of things for people to do. There are a few. Of mm -hmm. things there, but you know, and then that's also a very gr a good place to think about those mixed use residential oh, on top of the stores. You know, it can't be done in every place because uh, one of the things about Cedar Lane is like behind the movie theater section, 
there's no street there or parking lot. It's oh, other okay. residences. So you you know, for safety reasons, you have to be able to get completely around buildings. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know. You know, so but there are apartments back that's there, it. and there's that I love Beverly Road that has all those little townhouses just in back of the oh, you know, yeah. those are the types of things we need to expand on. We okay. have it, we just need to expand it. Then